the Avengers. That's what we call ourselves, sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes. Because if we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. All those fight sequences are put together. They're very much designed and previous before you start. I have a confession to make. Shooting fight sequences is actually quite dull because it's a series of pieces that you have to get to create the whole. Where I, I much prefer shooting two really good actors doing a really good scene with great writing. Doth mother know you weareth her drapes? I'd much rather watch that and film that than I would an action sequence, but you know, these films have action sequences. Usually an action sequence will be a collaboration between first and second units. If it's a superhero action sequence, so let's say that. So, so a superhero has certain powers. So when they hit someone, the person who's hit doesn't just fall to the ground like that. They probably have to be thrown back through the air 20 or 30 feet. So how do you execute something like that? So Thor's hitting someone with his hammer. Okay, so we'll have Chris Hemsworth and we'll shoot Chris's part over a stuntman and the stuntman will be on a wire gag and will be yanked back into a wall. If Chris Hemsworth then flies out of the shot, you know, he'll be on a wire rig and will be yanked out of the shot. Now, will we do those two together as one piece? Ideally, yes. You always try and keep them seamless and keep the actor in as much as you can and not use stunts if you can help it, but you can't, obviously you can't risk hurting your, your lead actors. So, so there's a payoff between those two. First of all, there may be a rough storyboard of what we think the action sequence is, particularly if it's a multiple crowd. So we'll start with a storyboard of what happens in the fight. Then what usually generally happens is that storyboard will be given to the stunt department and they'll do something we call stunt viz. They will create the sequence of stunts and they will shoot a rough assembly of what they think the shots are and what shots work. We will then look at the stunt viz and we'll get them to do bits again and then maybe that will end up in previs. So that will then get handed to previs and previs will execute it and each shot will be studied about how it's going to be done, what's on a wire, whether we're using a stunt person, whether we're using the real actor. So that will be the construction of it. And then you build it on set and like I said it's like a jigsaw of parts of fight sequence. You know, there are great fight suits that are done in one shot. There are great fight sequences, you know, but those take the same amount of planning. But that's generally how they'll work. They're never really, you get two people going at it and you just film it and try and cut it together afterwards because that'll look like crap. Because remember that in all these sequences, there is actually no contact in most of it. You know, every blow is a miss. You know, everyone is someone going like that and someone doing that, but there's never contact because you can't start punching each other. Even when it, you know, the stump guys don't punch each other, it's all about selling a fake punch. So there's only certain angles that those angles work at. You know, you can't go into a 50 50 shot for a punch and miss because you see the air between it. You have to be ideally you're over the stump performer onto the actor. The director will give them very specific notes and I might give them notes about what we feel the fight sequence should be, but that will usually go into the storyboards to begin with and then it will be discussed and they will present something and then that, they'll go back and work on it and it, you know, eventually you come up with a sequence. I mean, it's obviously far more involved when you've got people with superpowers and what their powers are and what their weapons are and what, you know, then they become far more involved than a standard punch up. So if there's a, a power gag, if Captain Marvel fires things or whatever, then that, there'll be an interactive lighting effect so that you see that. You, you know, certain things you'll put on in post, but there are certain things that you can't execute properly in post, like interactive light from blasts, fires, explosions, superpowers. The general rule is to put as much of it in in camera as you can, always. And now with lighting, with the new technologies and lighting, that's become far easier, depending on what it is. If it's fire, I won't use LED because I think you can do it better with a tungsten lamp. If it's, if it's a blast from a fist or, you know, a, then I would use an LED lamp, probably, depending on what response time you need. You know, because think about, if you take a conventional light, like a tungsten light, it has a slow 
decay and acceleration time. So it comes up woo, like that and goes out like that. Now that's good if it's a fire thing, woo, fades out. But if it's a blast, you want it to come on like that and go out like that. So you'd use a different technology for that. If you take a character who's firing so from his hand or his fist, we'll look at a concept drawing will be done of what that looks like. Then there'll be a, probably a visual effects test of what, if it's a whirly light or if it's a beam of light or is it an electric kind of light. I will look at that and then we'll put that person and I will shoot a test and I will create what I think that lighting effect will be and we'll shine it on him and at the person he's firing at. And then we'll send that to visual effects, they'll put the visual effect on, we'll see whether that all sits together properly and how much of it they want and how committed we want to be. I mean, if you've got someone doing a very positive action, like that, then you could put the lighting effect in because you're not going to change your mind about that. Once he's done that, the lighting effect has to go. But there might be times where, for instance, said, well, we don't know when this is happening, so we might not want to put it in. The gaffer and I will talk about what the lighting effect is and then we'll try and build it, yeah. The gaffer is my right-hand man. You know, without him, I'm lost. Because, particularly when you get into the big films, you know, the responsibilities are huge. Huge. And now I think even more so that role has got bigger and bigger because you are dealing with emerging technologies and there are so many demands upon lighting electronically now with different lighting rigs and reactive lighting rigs, travelling lighting rigs. So the gaffer will usually come on with me in pre-production and every set and every scene will be discussed and planned.